I love riding the subway, but I'm not a big fan of paying for the privilege. If you're quick, it's not too hard to hop the turnstiles. You know, maybe, maybe some folks notice you, maybe not. Key is to always act natural. Act like you belong, you know? Same attitude helps if you find yourself in an uncomfortable spot on the subway. I did my best to keep that in mind when I hopped into a crowded train full of monsters. See, at first I figured I'd stumbled upon some group Halloween outing. I mean, it was 3.03 a.m. on a cold morning in October. I didn't have any particular place to be, so I decided to ride the rails and take the first train to pull up. There was nothing weird about the cars from the outside, but the moment I stepped through the door, it was like walking into a fever dream. Men and women stood shoulder to shoulder, dressed in rags and wearing blank white masks. They all turned to look at me as I entered. My first indication was to take a step back, you know, leave the subway, go hide under my bed back in my apartment. Trouble was, I couldn't get my feet to move. The scene in front of me was just too surreal. I was only frozen for a few seconds, but it was long enough that I heard the hiss of the door closing behind me. The lurch of the subway moving forward almost caused me to stumble. Twenty or so masked faces followed me as I walked through the car. I, I mean, it, it was October, right? The obvious explanation for a metro full of weirdos was something to do with Halloween. I told myself it was all benign, if cringy, but fun. So why did I feel like a rabbit who just stumbled into a fox convention? The next car was blessedly empty. It was bright, clean. No signs of the unusual marker graffiti or unidentified stains of various viscosity. I released a breath I didn't realize I was holding and sat down. The cushion was lumpy and a brilliant shade of burnt mustard, but I was already feeling more at ease. The plan was to ride to the next stop and hop off, then do some night walking. Maybe, maybe a hunt for street tacos once it got closer to dawn. I stretched out and I looked out the window to watch the tunnel lights flicker past. Something bumped my leg. I looked over at the seat next to me, the one against the window. There was a dent in the middle of the cushion, as if somebody was sitting down. As I watched, the impression shifted. My throat closed up. I glanced at the other seats and I saw the same dimples in all of them. I stood up slowly and I began walking down the aisle, weaving between the poles. When I passed by a row of seats, the dents disappeared. I heard the unmistakable sound of a throat clearing, not, not usually the most alarming noise, but coming from an empty subway car. It put a little extra energy in my step. I tripped over something in the aisle and had to catch myself on the back of a seat. Watch it, someone said. I... I mumbled an apology and I kept moving. When I reached the door to the next car, I, I turned back. None of the seats were indented. Either I had hallucinated the whole thing and there was never anybody in the space with me or... Or they were all standing up. I backed up through the door. The next car appeared empty. It was dimmer than any of the previous cars, lights flickering on and off like fireflies. There was a smell. Christ, there was... there was a smell. It was like spoiled milk and cinnamon with a dash of the cleaning solution they used in hospitals. Music began to play as I walked through the car. Some twinkling jazz, all piano and brass. The music wasn't awful exactly, but it... it was far from pleasant. The musicians kept missing notes, losing their tempo, rushing and then dragging and then rushing again to catch up. I didn't want to spend the rest of my hopefully short trip listening to the racket and gagging on the smell, so I hurried along. The temperature dropped the further I got into the car. First it was brisk, then chilly, then my breath started rolling out in little clouds. I was shivering by the time I reached the midway point. The lights in the car were fogging up, making the space feel even darker and more claustrophobic. Even worse, both the odor and the music were ramping up with each step. By the time I reached the door, I was fighting down the urge to vomit, hands tight over my ears, my entire body shaking so hard I expected the change to fall out of my pocket. I opened the door leading to the next car and I froze. It was pitch black inside the cabin, an absolute crash of inky dark. 
Fuck. I mutter. Hesitating. The music continued to rise as I stood between the cars, and now there was no rhythm at all. Only a jarring, snapping, shrieking cacophony of noise that demanded it needed, needed. I ran into the next car and slammed the door behind me. Silence. Perfect. Beautiful, quiet. I sighed and I sank down to the floor. There was a squish and I jumped up. My hands were covered in the cold, oily fluid. Everywhere I sunk down was soaked in it. It smelled like wax and something sharper. I couldn't identify it. Fuck, I said, trying to shake some of the gunk off. Who are you? A voice from the dark. I opened and closed my mouth, not sure if I should reply. Who is that? Another voice said. You don't look familiar. Speak up, the first voice added. You can talk, right? <clears throat> I, I cleared my throat. I'm so, so, sorry. Voices bubbled up in the blackness. You're not supposed to be here. Stow away. Not welcome. Not welcome. Leave. 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 I obligated, sprinting down the aisle for the next car. I tripped over something heavy and wet, but bounced back immediately, crashing through the door to a new compartment. To my absolute terror, the car was... well lit. Monsters stared at me. Twisted things with animal eyes and open wounds and antlers, horns, sagging bellies dragging on the floor. One woman sat nearby, normal except for a split torso that revealed a cluster of beating hearts. Another man-shaped creature sighed, his mouth taking up all of his face except for empty sockets, weeping a clear fluid. You're not supposed to be here. I looked for the speaker and saw an old man in an even older conductor uniform. The blue in his jacket was so faded it was nearly gray. I mean, he seemed human, other than a series of jagged lines across his face and hands, like hairline cracks in glass. Do you have a ticket? The conductor asked, heading towards me. I really hope you have a ticket. My eyes darted around the car and landing on a small metal panel on the side of the train. A figure that flickered in static sat next to the panel. Jaw clenched. I dove for it. An alarm sounded when I opened the container. There was a slim red lever inside. Even if nothing else about the train was normal, it was nice to see that it still had an emergency brake. I pulled the lever. The creatures roared and shrieked and tumbled as the subway jerked to a stop. Hands and tentacles grasped me as I made my run for the door, which was opening so, so fucking slow. I felt a tug on my jacket just as I was about to cross. I slithered out of the garment and fell into the platform. You shouldn't have done that. I turned to see the conductor standing in the doorway, my denim jacket dangling from his hand. He looked down to the platform. I got a strange feeling that he wanted very much to step off the train but couldn't, or perhaps... Perhaps he was too afraid. The conductor met my eye, and I sucked in a breath at the contempt that I saw stitched across his face. I'll be seeing you. Stoy. The thing promised. As the doors closed. I sat there on the cold concrete of the platform until the nightmare train pulled out of the station. From now on, I'll be taking the bus. Hey there kids, it's me, Mr. Creepypasta, and I wanted to tell you thanks so much for watching tonight's video or listening to tonight's episode of the podcast. For those of you that are watching on YouTube, if you could do me a quick little favor, hit that little <laughs> thumbs up, since there's no longer a thumbs down, and go ahead and hit that subscribe button and hit the bell, because we're required to say that now, by law. If you guys are listening on the podcast, then I don't exactly know how those work. But I think there's a follow button or a subscribe button or something like that to hit. And as always, I want to give a big thank you to all of my contributors on Patreon. You guys are the real MVP. You guys keep the lights on here. And allow me to do a whole bunch of cool things like exclusive stories that we're getting a lot more of now, honestly. So thank you guys so much for being a part of that. And I should... Very special thank you to all of the big skeleton patrons, such as Jordan Alexander Sanchez, Brian Ars, Bobby Carmen, Stephanie Butler, Tristan Pelton, Chance Burnett, Diana Krause, Masknote, Rashad Collins, Joshua Mullen, Zavium, Dan Pham, Matthew McNeese, Shelly J, Ben Spates, Anna Storm, Jeremy H, Raltazol, Nana, The Morgan, Diamondella, Melted Lake, 
Tully Sue, William King, Reaper 61167, Darth Myver, Michael Ortiz, Satanic Aries, I Soda Hatred, Nessie, Parafa Panda, Bardo Hawk 764, Melancholy Corpse, Ferb, Lambda M98, Harley, Billy Morrow, Sashi Sazaku, at Grizzly Olsen Pro, Caden the Spooky Boy, Zane Nightshade, My Body Sounds Like Rice Krispies, Lord of the Weebs, Jay, Miss Xandra, Suji Campbell, Stricken, Azarine Fox, Fried Chicken 12, Freddy Krueger, Michael Scarborough, Happy Birthday, Jason Wilson, Infernal One, Lisa Cottrell, Caspian, Jordan Nels, Hades Nephew, Tater Chip, Acid System, Prozac and Pancake Appreciation Society, Cryptic Nightmares, Kiri the Sloth, Tommy Green, Fester Lampshade, Sky Harbor, Nico Kyle, Raphael Rodriguez, The Ginger Bros, Aaron Stormcrow, Daniel Polson, Trace Miles, and Corey Kenshin. Thank you guys so much for being a part of Patreon, and for everybody who's down there in the description, and everybody who even contributes just one dollar to patreon.com slash mrcreepypasta. And, as always, my friends, sweet dreams. <laughs>